Hi everyone, Animal Girl here, back with another of my top 10 favorite special edition countdowns. Today is Mother's Day, and this video is on my top 10 favorite mothers and mother figures in the movies, TV, and literature. Moms are one of the two most important people in our lives. And it's only fair that they have a special day where we get to show them how much we love and appreciate them. Now, in this video, I'll be counting down my top 10 favorite mothers and mother figures within TV, movies, and literature or books, whatever, however you want to um, state that. Now, please note two things. First off, this is strictly my opinion. So, if you don't feel someone qualifies for this list because you don't like them or someone you feel someone else is more deserving, please note that this is all strictly my opinion and you are entitled to yours. But <laughs> it's not really going to change how this list worked out. Second, some of the ladies who made this list are not technically mothers, but they do fill that mother role, and at least one of them is not a mother in one media, but she is in another. Okay, number 10 is Padme Amidala. Now, while she never actually got a chance to raise Luke and Leia as she dies shortly after they're born, she was a good mom when she was carrying them, and I have no doubt that if she had survived giving birth to them and had the chance to raise both of them or at least one of them, she would have been a good mom to them. Number nine is Aga from The Croods and Dawn of the Croods. In both the movie and the Netflix TV series, she really puts her kids first and does everything she can to make sure they have a good life. And in the movie, when she realizes that a lot of what they held to doesn't work in this new world they're in, she is willing to, and I'm trying to find my words here, um, say, we need to do, we need to change, we need to do this so we can survive. And when they felt that when they thought that Grug was not going to be able to join them again, she was willing to raise Sandy and Thunk basically on her own um, with help from her mother and Guy and, um, and Eep. Of course, everything works out, but that is, to me, the sign of a good mother willing to put her kids first. Okay, number eight is Elena Michaels, and if I misspelled her last her name, I apologize. From the Bidden TV series and from the Bidden book series. Now, in the TV series, she's not a mother, but in the book series, she actually does have two children, a twin son and daughter. Um, so I feel that because in the book series she is technically a mom. She belongs on this list, and she's actually a good mom to her two children. I cannot remember their names. I believe it's Kath they are Catherine and Logan, but it's been a while since I actually read the book, and they really only appeared up appeared in one book that I remember, and it was near the end, or that I read, and it was near the end. Um, but throughout that whole one book, when she's carrying them, she is very concerned about their well-being even before they're born to the point where she actually refuses to shape shift, which is something she needs to do um, to control her wolf. Okay, number seven is Baru Lars, and if I misspelled her name, I apologize. She's not a mother per se, as she never actually has children of her own, but she does raise Luke from the time he is a few few days old until he's 19. So, you know, in my opinion, that alone makes her not necessarily Luke's mother, but his mother figure. So she does deserve a spot on this list. 
Number six is Smee Skywalker, and if I misspelled her last her name, I apologize. Um, she basically raised Anakin from the time he was born until he was nine, and she was willing to let him go and leave Tatooine with Qui-Gon and Padme and Jar Jar and Obi-Wan so he could have a better life than the one she could give him. And again, to me, that is what a mother is. Someone who wants their children to have a better life than the one she has. And also, and they don't specify, excuse me, they don't specify the exact time period, but she does become the stepmother to Owen Lars when she marries his father after he buys her and sets her free. So she was also a stepmother as well. Number five is Sarabi from The Lion King. Sarabi, we don't see a lot of her in The Lion King, as the focus was mainly on Simba and Mufasa's relationship. However, you can tell in the few scenes that she is with Simba that she is a good mom. She really cares about her son, um, not only for his safety and when he and Nala go off on their little adventure to the watering hole, which is really to the elephant graveyard. She insists that they take Zazu with them so he can keep an eye on them. And when Scar informs them that Mufasa has died and they believe Simba has died as well, we see her grieving. We see her lower her head even more than the other lionesses did. And it's because while the other lionesses lost a prince and a king, she lost a husband and a son. So that shows her love for not only her mate, but also for their son. And then when Simba arrives home, all grown up, she's so happy to see him. She's so relieved that her baby boy is still alive. And then when he takes this place as king, she's so proud of him. We, we can see that. So she is actually a very good mother. Number four is Kate Daniels. Now, Kate, like Baru, is not technically a mother, but she does, at the end of the second of her second book, become the mother figure of a young witch. And she stays that way up through most of the series, I believe. And so... I honestly feel that that lets her qualify for being on this list. She also, for those of you who have read the book, kind, the books kind of know what kind of situation she's in. And while she is taking on guardianship of Julie, she knows Julie is not safe with her, so she sends her to a boarding school. And then later when she kind of hooks up with the Beast King, or the King of Beasts, or whatever the heck you want to call the leader of the shapeshifters, um, and Julie makes it clear that she does not want to stay at this private school, private boarding school, um, she allows Kate to stay with her, um, basically because they're staying at the keep, and there's no safer place than around a bunch of shapeshifters who will do anything to protect their queen and her adopted daughter who would be their princess. Okay, number three is Annalie Carwell, and she is from the book Star Wars Legends Kenobi by John Jackson Miller, and if you have not read that book, I highly recommend it. It is, it is very good. Um, no pictures of her um, because she is, a fic she is a character from a book, so I just put the book cover up there, as I did with... Um, the Kate Daniel book, um, or for Kate Daniel, but she is a mom as she has two children of her own that she basically raised on her own after her husband was killed by Tuscan Raiders. And she's also a mother figure to anyone and any, everyone who comes to 
her store slash home in the oasis where she lives. So she's got a couple of things that's got her um, that let her qualify for this list. Okay, number two is Nala. Now, much like Sarabi in the first Lion King movie. Nala, we don't see interacting much with her daughter, Kiara, because the focus was on Kiara's relationship with Simba, her father. But Nala is present in Kiara's life. We do see it. Um, when Kiara's a cub, um, she basically says that she is very much like Simba when he was a cub, and she does care about her daughter, but not to the point where she doesn't want her daughter to grow up. And we see more of her as a mom in the Disney Junior TV series, um, The Lion Guard, where we learn she has a second cub, Kovu, or not Kovu, um, Kion, excuse me. And there are also rumors that she had a cub before Kiara, um, Kopa, as a lot of people are saying, the cub at the end of The Lion King and Kiara is not Kiara from the beginning of The Lion King 2 because there are some differences. I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to comment on that. And there are some theories floating around out there that Vitani is not Zira's daughter but Nala's because they both share blue eyes and Nala... And her mother, Sarabi, were really the only two other lionesses that had blue eyes in the whole TV show. Uh, again, I'm not going to get into that. I just thought I'd mention it in this video. Now, my number one favorite mother or mother figure in TV, movies, and literature is Hera Syndulla from Star Wars Rebels. Hera makes number one on this list for a couple of points. First off, she is a mother figure to Ezra Bridger and Sabine Wren from the moment they basically come on board her ship, the Ghost, until they leave. Um, she's there for them when they need her. Um, you know, emotionally, um, when they need, you know, a mom to talk to, um, possibly when they get sick or hurt, she's there to take care of them. And she looked out for them, um, which is what a mom does. And she also worries about them. Um, I'm sure she still worries about them. And she is also the one she would give them motherly advice when they needed it. Um, within the show. And we also learn in the series finale that she had a child of her own as well. So she's not only a mother figure, but also a mother. Um, so she actually fills both sets within this video. Okay, feel free to check out my other top favorite special edition videos. Also, feel free to leave your comments and questions in the comment section. I do love to read those. And please like and subscribe if you are watching this video on YouTube or like and share if you are watching this video on Facebook. And feel free to follow me on YouTube, tum on Tumblr, Instagram, Twitter, and DeviantArt. Excuse me. I do have my names for those four sites right there on the screen as well as the pictures I use for the icons. Please note that all pictures seen within this video belong to their respective artists. I own absolutely nothing. Okay, also feel free to check out my other favorite top my other top favorite videos. My other video and my other videos.
Okay, um, just a quick reminder on my comment rules. Before I sign off, two things I'd like to touch on. First off, please note that my movie talk videos on Van Helsing, Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunters, and Spooky Buddies, and my movie talk video on birthday special edition video on The Lion King are exclusively on my Facebook page as of the posting of this video. I am making re I am going to do re-uploads of those videos for YouTube, but they will not be posted until October. This is due to the fact that Van Helsing and Hansel and Gretel are Halloween type movies, while Spooky Buddies is a Halloween movie, so it only makes sense to me to re-upload those videos in October, which is when Halloween is. So those should be up within the first three days of October. As for The Lion King, it is a birthday special edition video, so again, it only really makes sense to me to do a re-upload of that video on my actual birthday, which is in October. So, just be patient. I will get the re-uploads done. It's just going to take a little bit of time. Until then, you can check them out on my Facebook page. Also, TV Talk on Star Wars, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Dragons will be posted both on Facebook and YouTube. All other TV Talk videos will be exclusively to Facebook. If you want to check out any of those videos or the backlog videos of Star Wars, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Dragons, feel free to go to my Facebook page. I will have the link in the description section. And just to make it easier on you guys, here is a list of all the TV shows I've either done TV Talk videos on or I'm currently doing TV Talk videos on. Okay, and as always, thanks for watching. And to all you moms out there, have a very happy Mother's Day.